Ooh, is that a cold breeze go up my backside like when you jump out of the hot shower straight into the air conditioning? Woo! Wakes you up. Or maybe that's just uh, something that I've experienced in my life and maybe you, not yours. Anyway, hi, I'm Josh Sarah Welcome to Vicious RV, back to the point. Uh, behind us today, we're joined by the T26 Torque here at my Coldwater, Michigan hometown store. Although I always leave you a link in the video description, you can see where we have these parked at any of our given stores and uh, what we're asking. Um, now, what we're looking at today, it has some optional equipment and there's some other options available. We're gonna talk about all that kind of stuff as we go. This is a very popular floor plan, like Wolfpack makes a version. A lot of toy hauler builders make a version of this. Um, it's got a kitchen slide, which um, a, a slide into a garage area can be problematic, you know, from a fundamental standpoint. But because this is a 102 inch maximum width wide body product, even when that shallow slide closes, you should still have enough room for pretty much any side by side ATV. And if you need specific measurements on anything, Call our team, our folks are happy to come out here with a tape measure and we can help you measure twice and buy once. But if you do that, make sure you say, hey, I've got a side-by-side -side that's X inches wide, this many inches tall. That way we know what we're measuring against. So again, we can make sure we're helping you get the right one. Uh, they, they are using Asdell on the sidewalls. They've updated to not solar prep, but solar ready this year, which is very interesting across pretty much all the Heartland family of RVs. Um, there's some optional stuff, like we're looking at a generator today, but there's some other options that we can look at. I'm gonna kind of explain some of that as we go. There's some things about this RV I think are pretty sharp. There's also a couple areas that I, I feel are uh, able to be improved on uh, pretty readily from the factory level. And I'm going to try to give you a fair look at this so that you understand for your hard earned dollar what you're getting and maybe what you're not. So you can set your expectations right because not everything is just sunshine and rainbows, baby. Some things bear some consideration. And if you appreciate that fair approach, hit that subscribe button. Let's get inside there. And like I said, this is a really interesting mix of some really smart touches and thoughtful details along with a couple little either, huh, why'd you do that? Or man, that was that, that could have been easily better. But I don't know, typically it's small little preferential stuff. But as we go, I'd like to hear from you. What do you like and what do you dislike about it? Like that full-on ceiling fan, because this is a true toy hauler. And because it has a vaulted ceiling, they had tons of room in the ceiling of this. So especially if what you're trying to do is just kind of have a little bit of a fresh air breeze, you don't want to necessarily crank the air conditioner, or you do want to crank the air conditioner and you just like the airflow moving around. You can do that here. Now, um, one of the questions anytime I'm doing a toy hauler, and there's one of these kind of, uh, well, any sort of ramp door, if, it, if you don't already see one of those glass enclosed three seasons walls, people want to know, can you get one? And the answer to that is they do not offer that as an option here on the Torque series. Uh, basically, it comes standard with that roll-down tent screen wall that you can zip up and pass through, or you can leave the screen door section open. Whatever you kind of want to do there. Um, but it, the uh, the glass enclosed thing is just not available on these. Now, if that's a question you are going to answer, and I help proactively answer that for you, do me a favor, at least click the like button on the video or leave me a note that just says, hey, thanks for the thing on the ramp door. You know, even if it's bad news, I'm going to go out of my way to kind of help educate you on that. Now, Lithium is this one's little brother. Lithium's now laminated wall, by the way. They used to be purely stick and tin, kind of like a, a Wolfpack Gold series. Um, lithium comes with one chair. This comes with a pair of those swivel rocker recliners. And I really like putting them back here on the ramp patio because something I don't think I do enough, um, often because all you're seeing is a bunch of other campers here, is, I mean, really get you out here and just experience this. There is something very cool about being elevated up and above just the general ground level. It just looks awesome. It feels awesome. It's fun to be out here. And if it's a nice sunny day, I guarantee you, this is where everyone's going to want to hang out back here. I'll just give you a nice look at the uh, the back end of this thing. And one of those, remember I said thoughtful details, very functional thing, is if it's morning or night and you're loading up, you've got double flood loading lights back here. Now you see that this one has uh, a rear camera prep. Even if an RV doesn't have that, it can have a rear camera put on it. It's frankly no more or less difficult to accomplish. That's the funny thing about this. Now um, over here, You've got that, uh, these things, a lot of people will, will be on a Facebook group and say, I just bought an RV, what's that? That's a two-way air vent. So when you're loading this in, if you're loading something with a combustion engine, like maybe a golf cart or an ATV or a motorcycle or what, anything like that, 
you want to make sure all those fumes get out of the RV so it doesn't smell like a garage in here. That's what those air vents do. When you're going down the road, it can help really cycle some air through this thing. Uh, I, I tell you, look at the campsite window coverage on this. Even if you have to have the ramp patio closed, you're stuck inside. Look at all the coverage over here. This is absolutely awesome. And I tell you what, it doesn't hurt that it is just that beautiful blue sky day. It had been raining uh, like the last three days and it finally broke and I had a chance to get out here. I am just glad to see it personally. Um, notice too, man, they, they gave you plenty of tie downs. Although I do have to laugh. Um, <laughs> you know, it's not that there's anything wrong uh, with the, like, okay, so the tie downs are 2,500 pound rated, and that's cool. I think it's funny though, like in the Heartland brochure, what it says is professionally installed tie downs. Well, yeah, I'd hope so. <laughs> I should hope that to be the case. I would hope they wouldn't recruit uh, some amateur uh, to, to come in here like me. Like, you wouldn't want me doing the tool work on this stuff, but obviously I'm just being kind of tongue-in-cheek in here. I do like, by the way, they made sure to keep the heat vents out of the floor. It boggles my mind to see a toy hauler with heat vents in the floor. That just doesn't make sense to me. Now, we're going to see that this RV includes a floating picnic table. You're going to see that later I just stage it up sitting on the, uh, the patio deck just so that you get the idea that you can move it around. Having it over here with a couple chairs overlooking that window I think would be absolutely awesome. They have a three-zone JBL speaker system in this, by the way. So, like, if you want different entertainment outside versus inside, uh, you, know, you you can do that here, which is actually very, very cool, I think. Um, not to mention it, it sounds good, but the problem is the audio equipment I have isn't really good at picking up significant audio variances on things. So let's take a look at some storage here, just kind of pan you around a little bit. I'm also going to give them some credit. Toy haulers, um, when I record them, they have some serious light pollution coming in from the exterior of the RV since the ramp door is wide open. This has a very, very good lighting package in it. I was really happy to see that. Um, with that kitchen slide, they packed a ton of storage space into this. Uh, I, I would... Little nitpicks that I have personally, I would like to see some kind of stovetop side splash right over here next to that refrigerator. And this is one of those other things that I, I think might be a point of concern and or consideration for some folks. Um, that is an eight cubic foot gas electric two-way refrigerator. That is what's standard in here. And it is currently the only thing that they offer in these. There is no 12 volt swaption. And I would like to hear from you folks what the you know, people who actually use toy haulers please chime in what sort of refrigerator re, refrigerator is that like a uh a waiter who sits in the refrigerator i i don't know what it is but i think you know what i meant what fridge would you prefer to have in your rv so um like a lot of toy haulers you've got that happy jack power bed lift system we've got like the queen bed above um, well, and it folds down into double queens. That's a cool thing with this. This can sleep six adults and you can have seating for six adults during the day. Now, coming up with personal storage, like you're going to be living out of duffel bags if you do that. But if you're going to have some friends over for the weekend, I think you could make that work. Again, that table can float around. You've got those two swivel chairs you can bring inside or outside. You can have all kinds of people hanging around the, uh, the table playing games or whatnot indoors or whatever works for you. These things are so flexible, and I really wish we didn't call them toy haulers. That's old nomenclature. I largely feel um, it, it doesn't apply as well as it used to. I, I kind of wish we used the phrase sport utility trailer because I personally think that would, uh, th that would match these much, much better. Now, this is interesting. Behind the TV in this little side pocket, they put some power outlets. Now, Regular viewer, Mr. Aaron Thor, I think would be disappointed to learn that I believe there's just some wasted dead space behind that TV where they didn't put like a flip up TV in storage. That's again, one of those little details that maybe somebody might prefer, but they, they're not doing here. Now this is a full viewing window with the door. It is shade ready, does not include the shade from the factory. That is an easy thing to do by the way though. You don't need a technician to do something like that. And I frankly can't believe I just successfully moonwalked backwards through that many twists and turns without running into stuff. I'm sure later in the video, I'll be backing up and run into something because that's just 
how it always ends up going. Um, what do you think, by the way, is it, I, I suck with my home and garden television terms. Is that called herringbone pattern for, for, I like, I feel like I'm starting to get closer to, to learning some of these things, but I'm not really too much of a uh, ace at it. Um, let's look at, you know, bathroom storage, just like we did the kitchen. You've got yourself a serious lipid storage, storage large medicine cabinet, and some nice little space down below the sink. Now, with a lot of RV manufacturers, you're going to see that's basically where it ends, but you'll find that in this one, they did a good job of bathroom storage. That is a, a plastic toilet, which is functional. It's fine. If you wanted to swap that out for a porcelain, you could. And you saw that there's tons of room around that. With this having an eight and a half foot body, an eight, uh, a 102 inch wide body, they have tons of room around that toilet. Now I'm gonna try to moonwalk back here since I've been successful doing it so far. And look at the headroom. Um, I think Shaquille O'Neal could comfortably stand in that shower, although uh, he is a uh, he's a large individual. I don't think he would comfortably uh, have the elbow room that you want in that shower, but I want to key you in on something. You see that extra little shelf back there? That is an indicator that this is an extra large radius shower, and something I don't know that everybody is necessarily aware of is that not all radius showers are created equally. So if you're not normally a fan of radius showers, you feel they're limiting on elbow room or something, respect, no problem, I get that. But what, uh, what I want you to understand is you might want to check this one out in person. It might not be as uh, bad as you thought. So you saw the uh, storage space there in the uh, bathroom. And you know what? We're just going to keep on rolling right through. I like, I like how they trimmed all that out. But again, being fair... It would be nice if it lined up a little bit better. You know, it's it's almost like they did an extra cool thing. They did some extra work, but if you're not going to execute it well, it almost like reflects badly on you, if that makes sense. Now, up here in the bedroom, I like what they did with their hanging towers, how you have those side pockets right there. Uh, that is just such a cool place. Like if you want a phone or something like that, a little phone charger, that is absolutely perfect. But what's interesting to me if you've been keeping score, not a whole lot of USB outlets that you can see, but there actually have been USB outlets that maybe you didn't realize were there. Like you look down here, you see household plugs. You look over, uh, like like we just saw over there by the uh, the side pockets, and you see household plugs. There are USB plugs uh, on this. Um, here's where they're located. Some of these light fixtures near seating or sleeping zones have usb plugs on them they're so heartland does that a lot and they're missed a lot and people don't realize that they're there because that's already a 12 volt powered fixture so it makes sense to just piggyback off that and give you usb power it actually works really well it's really smart it's very cost effective now this rv is outfitted with a single 15,000 btu air conditioner it's 30 amp service uh you can outfit this with 50 amp service and second air prep or you can get 50 amp service and a second factory air install, which will actually change your generator if you choose to also add that option. We'll talk about that outside. I do like that vent fan up there. That could easily be upgraded to the larger variety if you are so inclined. Um, something I don't wanna miss, big window over here, overlooking the campsite of the RV, even in the bedroom, which is nice. And they are using a, uh, a king bed in this thing. Now, I don't use fisheye wide angle lenses, so it's actually just going to dominate the camera frame and, and it's really hard to get scope and scale as a result. I do want you to see though that you do have room to walk around this. You don't have to do the butt scoot boogie. Uh, you know, you can sit on the end of the bed and tie your shoes or something like that um, if you need to. Also, they did a good, I, I like when manufacturers do this. They did a good job of the bedroom storage. I like how each side of the bed has its own individual dresser drawer. I like how it has the uh, storage above the bed there. I like how it has uh, the very tall, like tall enough for Uncle Gary's sundresses, those hanging wardrobe towers. Now it does have a storage foot locker, uh, you know, under the bed. It does lack any sort of gas struts or anything. So I had to kind of do a little trick where I wedged that sort of wood flap up under the mattress. If you replace that backbreaker death wafer thin mattress, uh, that could be a little bit challenging and or heavy and or problematic. So again, trying to share the good, the bad with the ugly, with everything in between. And along with that, let's take a look at this in road mode. 
So starting from the back here, once again, with the slide closed, we still have some really decent loading width. Notice where they put the tie downs in the floor. You may have noticed when the slide was open, it looked asymmetrical and it looked kind of goof stupid. Well, that's because when the slide closes, this is logically when you're going to probably use the uh, the tie downs. Now I'm kind of curious, does anybody use a toy hauler or as I prefer to call it, a sport utility trailer, which is funny because that's actually the original name for toy haulers. They were called SUTs instead of toy haulers. I really wish they still called them that, but does anybody use it for something other than hauling a toy? I'd be really curious. Maybe some other viewers might be interested to find out this could work for them when they didn't even think about it. Now, this little QR code, why am I pausing on this? Well, people who didn't ask, I'll tell you why. Um, a lot of RVs are going away from giving you paper manuals. And it's funny because even the sticker says, hey, half the time the manuals don't even necessarily apply to your specific RV. They're written so generically and vaguely in case they change a water heater or something like that, that they're not super useful sometimes. But Heartland has an owner's app. You can get, uh, well, first of all, you can call their customer service. You can request a paper copy of your manuals. They will do that. That's still available if you prefer that. Like my wife is an A-type personality who files everything and it comes in handy sometimes. No, no judgment. But they have an owner's app that is fantastic. Now it can do a lot of things. It can help you track all sorts of service records on your RVs. It can act as a bit of a community function. There's, uh, you know, they got an owner's form. They are making an effort to really help step up in the technology side of things. And if you're an existing Heartland owner, or if you purchase a Heartland RV, not just a tour, I really recommend you scan that little code or just look up like uh, Heartland uh, RV or something like that in your app store and download that app and play with it. I've messed with it a little bit. I actually thought it was very cool. I just thought I'd toss that little nugget in there. If I remember, I will try to look up links to the Apple and, and uh, Android app stores for that. And if I forget, Leave me a little note that says, hey, dummy, you forgot the links. I won't even take offense if you use those exact words. Frankly, I'd be disappointed if you didn't. <laughs> so if we start talking towing on this torque travel trailer right there, a lot of alliteration going on, um, when you see a model number 26, I think a lot of times the, ooh, is that half ton towable thoughts start peeking into people's heads. And there are frankly plenty of places that will sell you this, uh, say, well, the dry weight is less than your, your half ton pickups tow capacity. I'm not one of those people. What you need to do is look at the GVW on this, because remember, this is made to accept a hefty load. It has a really high cargo carrying capacity. And uh, as a result, this thing has 12,800 uh, pounds of gross vehicle weight, meaning maximum weight of the RV plus all potential cargo. For me, there's no way. With the body width, the, the, the height of this thing, there's no way I would personally handle this with a half ton. Now that is, I'm not gonna claim to be the authority and I'm not gonna say, I'm not one of these tow police guys you know what, you, you're, you're uh, well, many of you watching are Americans. I've really come to find there's quite a, a large number of international viewers keeping an eye on this channel now, which is incredibly crazy to me and humbling considering I'm just one chubby bod dude coming out of a small town over here in the Midwest. But um, I, I, I really, you know, love and appreciate all the folks who have tuned in for all these years. But that's just my two cents on this. Anyone with towing experience on this or something similar size, please feel free to pop into the comment section. Now, I think they put a pretty decent awning on this. Actually, I really like how the door's in the middle of the awning, well, close enough to the middle, along with them, some serious campsite window coverage. If you're stuck on a rainy day, you're not gonna feel like you're like super duper trapped in here, which is awful nice. Now, sometimes things like this change. Sometimes uh, manufacturers change suppliers. At the time of this filming, they're using Dexter axles and uh, shackle systems right there, which are going to take a lot of that uh, bump and jolt out of your towing experience. So that is something uh, for some smoother ride and handling that sh you know is, is always a good feature. The underbelly of these is enclosed except in the garage area like we're looking at right now. So under the like kitchen, bedroom and bathroom, it is enclosed, it is forced air heated. So why not back here? And the answer is because of that black box right there. That is your fueling station. Fire code prevents them from enclosing a fuel cell in the event that there's some kind of leak or fume buildup. You don't want to accidentally turn your torque into a time bomb. Uh, you know, that would uh, not be a good thing. Remember that, for some reason now, I'm reminded of that, uh, that movie Speed. 
with Keanu Reeves. You know, it's kind of funny because I think a lot of people really looked at, uh, you know, Keanu Reeves' career with speed as sort of the the, uh, the benchmark. And then came the Matrix, and suddenly, I know Kung Fu became like his signature tagline for a while. And then Keanu Reeves became uh, America's uncle. And just everybody loves this guy because he's like one of the few people, it seems like, in Hollywood that's just not a, uh, a giant bag of hot garbage. And it occurs to me right now, I apparently have some very strong opinions about one Mr. Keanu Reeves. I, I, I guess I view him in a very positive light. I wasn't really aware of that until I went off way deep on this tangent for the last minute and a half here while we're supposed to be talking about a torque travel trailer, so apologies there. Now, uh, the ramp patio package is uh, something you don't necessarily have to get on one of these. So like, if you're um, camping out west, and you're like, dude, there's no way I'm going to leave that uh, ramp patio open. If you're like, dude, <laughs> well, you don't have to get it. Um, kind of like, uh, you know, the, the second air conditioner or 50 amp service or the generator that we're going to see. You don't have to get those. Fueling station that we're looking at right here is standard. And it's a single 30 gallon fuel cell that will um, share the fuel tank with the generator that we're going to see in just a minute here up front. Now that ladder's folded down right now but I applaud them for continuing to include a ladder because it seems like a lot of manufacturers have started doing that um, prep for telescopic ladder only. And you know what, on a small travel trailer, on a budget travel trailer, that really doesn't uh, like offend me. But on something like this with a decent amount of size and especially something, and there's an RV behind me if the camera lurch that's because I just straight knocked the air out of myself backing into something, sorry. What I was getting at is because the ceiling, the roof, is up so high on this, I really, really prefer just to have a ladder built right onto it. Oh, yes! This has a single-headed sewer monster. So you've got, uh, you know, only one sewer outlet on this, the black, the gray, uh, all kind of drains into one tank. That is nice, so you don't have to, like, uh, cross-plumb it or, you know, get a Y-split or anything like that. This will always be gen-prepped but you can get the generator. Now what's interesting is, notice how the generator looks a little bit small in that housing with that heat shielding? That's because the generator size will actually be changed depending on the electrical service of the RV. So what I'm saying is, this is a 30 amp rig as we're looking at it right now with a single air conditioner. So it has a 4,000 generator. If you wanna get this from the factory with the uh, dual air conditioners, the 50 amp service, you can get it with the bigger like five or 5,500 generator, whichever one it is, so that you can park anywhere and enjoy full service on the RV, you know, provided you're still pumping fuel into that tank. And I actually, you know, th that is one of those things where the experience that Heartland has with their toy hauler division, I think is really telling right there because a lot of manufacturers, they'll just go, no, we use a 4,000, deal with it. And they're like, no, that's stupid. There's a better way. So as always, I like to hear from you. What do you like? What do you dislike? Or what would you change given the opportunity? Again, check the links in the video description. You can see uh, where we have one of these T26 torques parked and what we're asking on a given day. Because remember, with uh, different shipping distances between different stores, uh, second air conditioner generator with some big dollar options available, the price of this could literally swing probably $10,000 depending on where it's parked and how it's equipped. So we let you see each individual RV with its individual pricing and current availability uh, right there on our website at any given point. No need to call and give us a blood sample and your social security number or anything like that. It's all right there for you, whether you're curious or whether you're serious. So until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Bye.